you get home after shooting all day and you've got epic drone shots here and super slow motion at 120 frames per second over here. It's amazing and you import all of it and then you realize something. None of your clips make sense. How are you gonna edit all this together? Suddenly, boom, you got the B-roll blues. But don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to formula a story from your B-roll. Whoa, 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 okay. None of those B-roll shots made sense together. B-roll is something everybody's talking about lately, and there's a lot of misconception of, of what it is and why you want to use it. I mean, you either love it or you hate it. People love B-roll because it's relatively easy to do. Most cameras nowadays shoot in 120, and you can get this nice, super buttery smooth shots, right? And, and that's great. That's why people love it. So there's also another group of people who hate B-roll, and that's because they continually watch other people's edits that don't use it properly. Proper usage of B-roll is very important. I mean, you look at somebody like Casey Neistat, he uses B-roll of time lapses to establish location. You look at Peter McKinnon, he uses slow motion B-roll to really immerse you in that moment. The more you understand how filmmakers use B-roll, the more you'll be able to enhance your story with it. So let's talk about B-roll first. One, what is B-roll? The current perception of what B-roll is, is it's something that's shot in super slow motion, really close up with a very fast lens, open really wide, and it looks beautiful. But that's not what B-roll is. B-roll is there to enhance the story. Now, did you notice there was no, there was no mention of specs, there was no mention of how many frames per second, B-roll is there to enhance the story. It moves your story from one place to another. And by doing that, it helps glue all of your, your A-roll together, which they don't call A-roll anymore. They just basically, it's your talking head or your, your dialogue. It links all of those separate clips together. So when you need to make a transition from one thing to another, you can use B-roll. Like for example, if I said, oh, I'm gonna make some coffee. I wouldn't show you in real time me making coffee or me cutting to you know, me making coffee, I would say I'm making myself coffee and cut to a couple of shots of making coffee. And then boom, at the end, have a nice, you know, cup of coffee done. Sure, coffee's been overdone because it's really easy and it's fun to do. I mean, vloggers love doing coffee. I'm guilty of it too. It's, it's a fun process. But that's just it. it. It's a process. It takes you from one point of the story to the next point. I don't have coffee. I do a bunch of things. I now have coffee. So B-roll enhances that story. Okay, so how do you formulate a story? Back in the old days when I did commercial direction, I really had to tell a story very quickly within 30 seconds, right? You have to build a story and every shot that you use is very important because you only have 30 seconds to tell a beginning, a middle, and an end to a story. So it's very important to have every shot in there mean something. And I think that's the biggest problem right now is that people who are adding B-roll into their videos aren't adding it because it means something, they're adding it because it looks cool. Oh, it's a drone shot. It's a, you know, it's a super slow motion of water moving or whatever. I mean, great, but it needs to enhance the story somehow. It needs to move you along from point A to point B. So here are some tips for building a story around B-roll. So before even editing, Go in and look at all of your imported footage. You, you know what you shot already, so go in and look at it and get familiar with it because you're gonna have to build a story out of it. Now, out of that story, it could be you know something very simple like somebody going into a store and getting a sandwich or, uh, I don't know, somebody building a snowman. I mean, it's getting winter time, so it might be kind of fun, right? So you're what you're doing is you're looking at all your footage and you wanna build a story. I mean, it's very simple. It's just one, two, three. It's, it's how stories work. It's, why storytelling is very important. Because that's gonna be your, your base. That's your foundation of what you're gonna edit. That's how you start and how you end. First tip is, if you're stuck, edit chronologically because it makes more sense. You can go from, like I said, let's go with making a snowman, right? You can show snow falling and then somebody collecting a bunch of snow and then rolling it into a ball and then putting the first one down and then you know making the second one. So you get the idea, you, you chronologically do that but you don't have to. It's just a tip to sort of get you started. Okay, the second tip is find the common thread through all of your shots. So what you wanna do is you wanna connect like parts, right? So if you 
are showing a stream in one shot cut to something else that is a stream with more to the story, right? So if it's if you're cutting to a close-up of a stream that's running, or like for example, let's use the beach one that I did. You, you cut to some, you know, my daughter having a bucket, to what's in the bucket, to then what do you do with the bucket, to then what comes out of the bucket, right? So you're 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 using a common thread through things. Use that common thread as something to help you tell your story because that's gonna help you go from the very beginning to the very end. Third thing to help you with, use one character. When you create a story, and I mean, this is obviously there's rules to be broken on these things, but if you wanna simplify things, you may have shot a lot of B-roll of everything, but if you use one character, and that character does not have to be human, by the way, if you use one character throughout your story, you can then easily bring the audience along to care for that one particular character, right? And that could be like, for example, if you did fall foliage, right? You can show a shot of a leaf in a tree, and then you can show the next shot of it falling down uh, onto, onto the ground into the whole mess of, you know, other, other leaves. Then you can show somebody coming in and picking that particular leaf up. That idea of the throughput from one, uh, one shot with the leaf all the way to the leaf's journey. So when I start an edit, I start with a story. I try to figure out what it is I want to say. So I go from one, you know, one place to another place. Those elements are the, the foundation to the story that I'm going to create. So then what I do is I just then drop in things to get me there. I know where I start. I know where I end. Now I have to show that journey of how to get there. And I have to do it with every shot has to advance the story. At no point should there be a, a shot in there that does not enhance the story. All right, so if you made it this far, which is great, here's a challenge to you. Try doing a video with only B-roll. Look and focus on something that you can tell a story with. And the story can be very simple. That practice of creating a story without the main shots is gonna help you figure out why B-roll exists and why you need to put it in there. I challenge you with that. I want to make an entire video with just B-roll. And however you want to do B-roll, it doesn't have to necessarily be all slow motion or you know all close-up shots. However you want to do B-roll, create that story where it's not a talking head, right? It's not this, it's not, not what I'm doing right now. It's all of those cool, clean shots that you think B-roll can be. So I challenge you that. I'll put the challenge out too. Maybe we'll call it something like, I don't know, hashtag B-roll blues or, um, no, that doesn't sound good because that's negative. We don't want negative. I'll do another video at some point and I'll encourage you all to jump in on that as well. So we can try it. Let's see. So I hope that helped. That's how I tell my stories. I hope that gives you a little bit of insight into how I do that. And if you have any questions or comments, you know, hit me up down below in the comment section and, you know, let me know. Let me know how I can help in any way. All right. Well, I'm Corey Weekly and I'll see you tomorrow.